Hello again everyone, this is the Biologist 13 and welcome back to the Custom Spawners Tutorial Part 2. And in this tutorial we're going to go over some of the utility commands in Custom Spawners. So let's go right into it. And I say that every video it seems. Anyway, so the first thing that we're going to go through is entity and spawner naming. So uh, names just basically allow you to give it a name instead of a number. And they also just make it easier to identify stuff. So t the way you do that is slash CSE name and then the ID number of the entity that you want so let's use entity 1 from the last tutorial so we'll do name 1 and then let's set it to be uh, pigu so now that entity is called pigu and we can refer to it as such so like if we wanted to make it so it's not saddled anymore we could do slash CSC uh, set saddled and then pigu and then false so now it allowed us to do that. And we can also set it back to true because we want it to be saddled. So the other thing you can do is you can also do that to spawners. So let's say we want to name this pigu spawner. So you can do slash CSS name. This is spawner one. And we can do pigu spawner. And we can also refer to it by that instead of the ID number anytime we want. Uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is seeing all the info. And we saw in the last tutorial the spawner info. So you can also do that with entities. So for that you do slash CSE, or CSS, my bad, info, and then the spawner. So we're going to say pigu spawner. Oops. So that allows us to see, oops. Wow. I just did that. Slash CSE, info, and then pigu. So you can see there's a lot of different properties for entities, and we'll go through all of them by the end of this tutorial series. Not this specific tutorial, because it didn't make that like an hour long. Anyway, um, so that's how you can see that for all the info commands. Um, the other thing you can do is, as you saw in the last tutorial, we can activate spawners, but we can also turn them off. So let's say we wanted this guy not spawning anymore. It actually isn't spawning right now. But to turn a spawner off, you just do slash CSS off and then the ID number so pigu spawner so that makes it so it's just off and it won't and when a spawner is off it won't spawn anything hey sheep so uh, the other thing you can do is you can activate or deactivate all spawners on the server all at once so for that you just do slash CSS all on so I'll make them all active and you'll see this will start spawning any second now yep there we are and we can also deactivate them by just doing all off and I'll just turn them all off. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to talk about uh, removing mobs from a spawner. So say you want it, you had rampant mobs everywhere and they were filling up your town and you didn't want that. So what you can do to remove mobs from a specific spawner, like all the mobs created by the spawner, this piggy spawner right here, you can do slash CSS, remove mobs and then the ID number, which is 1, or you can do pigu spawner. And you saw it removes those pigs. So the other thing you can do with the remove command is you can remove all mobs created by custom spawners on the whole server all at once. And that command is remove, or slash CSS remove all mobs. And that would remove all the spawned mobs. So the other thing you can do is you can select a spawner or an entity for easier property changing. So basically selection is just so you don't have to type in the ID number every time, you can just skip that. So to select something, to select an entity for example, you do slash CSE, SEL for select, and then the ID number or name, so that's pigu. So we select an entity pigu. So now instead of when we want to like change the saddled property or whatever, instead of having to say pigu, we can just do slash CSE saddle, and then so we we don't need the ID number, we can just do true, and that worked, and we didn't even need to specify that. And you can also select a spawner, so slash that's slash CSE S S my bad, I get those confused so easy. <laughs> um, then SEL, and then the ID number, so that's pigu spawner. So we selected that, and now we can change any property there, like for example, the spawn rate. So slash CSS, rate, and then let's just make it like 20. So that allows us to just easily change all that. And if you want to modify something 
that's not your selection, when you have something selected, you prefix that whatever that is with a T. So I have a spawner with ID number zero. So let's say I wanted to set that to have a 20 tick rate. So we could just do T colon zero and it would change that one instead of changing Pigu spawner. And then if you ever want to deselect something, you just do slash CSC SEL or slash CSS SEL. And you can even put none after that. So those are those selection things, obviously, because you know that's what we just did for like a minute and a half or whatever that was. I'm not I'm not I'm not counting. Anyway. <laughs> uh you can also, if you decide you don't need a spawner or entity anymore, you can remove that. So let's say we wanted to remove that spawner zero since we're not using it anymore. We could do slash CSS REM and zero. And I'll just say spawner zero has been removed from the server. Or you can do that for an entity. So that's REM or slash CSE REM and then the entity. So entity zero has been removed. I'm just gonna set the time real quick. So yeah, those are just some basic utility commands. Oh, and there's actually one more. Uh, that is to list all the created entities on the server. So that is slash CSE list, and it shows you all the entities that have been created on the server. So it'll, so it'll show the ID number, the type of entity, and the name if it has one. And you can also do that for uh, spawners with slash CSS list. Uh, it'll say the ID number, the main entity that it spawns, because you can actually have multiple entities from one spawner. Uh, we'll get into that in a future tutorial. Then it says the location and the name, if it has one. You can also list nearby spawners, so that's slash CSS list near. And that'll show all the spawners within 25 blocks. So since we were closer than 25 blocks to our spawner there, it showed it. But let's say we fly over into this flock of sheep over here. Look at all of them. <laughs> I didn't I didn't put a spawner over here either. Uh, but if we go over here, it'll say there are no spawners within 25 blocks. So that's uh, useful if you're around in a dungeon or whatever. Um, and, oh, there is actually one more. I keep thinking of these. Uh, you can also make it, if you're creating a dungeon on your server for people to play on, you can make a spawner hidden, which basically makes it so players without permission cannot see them. So for that, you do slash CSS hidden and then your ID number, so that's uh, one for us. Oops. And you have to say true or false. So that'll make it so if I didn't have permission, I wouldn't be able to list that spawner on the view. And then you can just set it to false. So uh, yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. What? Just what? 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 Just seriously, what? Uh, uh.